Hello, and welcome to another issue of The Numbers of Thoth. Brought to you by Martin and Julia Herdman. Today, we are looking at ancient Egyptian glass. In 2005, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a Bronze Age glass factory, dating to around 1250 BC, at Kantra, the site of the royal city of Pyramasus, in the Nile Delta. The area has been under archaeological investigation for over 40 years under the directorship of the Roma Polyseus Museum in Hildesheim. The excavation team found a large cluster of workshops, in 2005, where hundreds of artisans once worked, not only on making glass, but also on making bronze doors, and glazed bricks. The workshops were part of the industrial quarter of the new capital in the Nile Delta commissioned by Ramesses the Great during a peaceful period in Egyptian history. The researchers found over 1,000 fragments of various vessels used for producing glass from its raw materials – sand, natron salt and ash. The glass found at Kant was not the first glass to be found in Egypt. Excavations by Sir Flinders Petrie in the 1890s at Amarna were the first to uncover Egyptian-made glass artifacts. These finds dominated our understanding of Egyptian glass working until the discoveries at Kant. Now our understanding has been transformed by what the archaeologists uncovered at this new kingdom, Delta site. Archaeologists can now show, for the first time, how the ancient Egyptians actually made glass. The site at Kantra has turned out to be the largest known high-temperature workshop yet discovered in antiquity. Over the course of 15 years of scientific analysis, archaeologists have been able to confirm that glass was being made there during the reign of Ramesses II. They have also been able to reconstruct significant details of the glass-making process, and to show that some of the glass found by Petrie, in the 1890s, came from the site. Most of the glass was used to make jewelry such as pendants and beads. Colored glass was also used in mosaics, inlaid into furniture, or formed into figurines. As glass-making techniques were perfected they could be used to create intricately designed colorful and translucent vessels for precious oils and perfumes. Before glass blowing was developed in the 1st century BC, core glass vessels were made by forming the glass around a mold made from clay. The glass was wrapped around the mold in thin runs that were fused together in the furnace. Metal tools were sometimes used to create patterns in the molten glass such as zigzags and scales. Once the mold was completely encased, the outer glass would be polished smooth, and the clay scraped out. Although ancient Egypt is often described by alternative archaeologists as being in possession of some kind of superior high technology, they did not invent glass making. In all likelihood, the Egyptians learned glass making from their Asiatic neighbors. Possibly from captives taken during Egyptian military campaigns in the east under the 18th dynasty pharaohship of Thutmose III who reigned between 1490 and 1436 BC. In the early days of Egyptian glass production, the shapes and molds were copies of Asiatic designs. But, as the industry developed specific Egyptian designs emerged, such as the palm column coal tube. This little cosmetic bottle was modeled on a popular architectural form, the palm column, and used to hold the costly black pigment used to darken the edges of the eyes. Light and mid-blue glasses were produced using copper in the form of bronze or copper scale, which was added to the melt. Lead isotopic analysis suggests that the copper colorant has the same source as the copper used in Egyptian tools and weapons. Darker blue glasses were often made with a cobalt colorant which was sourced from the western oases. Antimony from the Caucasus Mountains, was added to make white glass. And, lead from Egyptian mines, at Gebelzite, on the Red Sea coast, was added to make yellow. Once, the Egyptians had learned the techniques of glass making. The abundance of raw materials available to them in Egypt meant that the Egyptian glass industry grew quickly. The bottle was invented sometime around 1500 BC, by Egyptian artisans. Egyptian workshops not only produced a variety of wares for consumption by the royal court and aristocrats, who could afford such luxuries, they also exported large quantities of raw glass. The problem of transporting glass was solved by forming it into small, thick ingots. The ingots could be shipped with minimal threat of breakage and sold to artisans, who could melt them down to form the glass as they desired. 
Ingots like those made at Pyramasus have been found in Mesopotamia, as well as in the wreck of a late Bronze Age ship found off the coast of Turkey, suggesting that Egypt used glass as a valuable trade commodity. Glass seems to have been regarded as an extension of the turquoise blue slip faience and, perhaps by implication, of semi-precious stones such as turquoise, lapis lazuli, and green feldspar. The connection between these materials is probably through color and brilliance. Faience was regarded as a substitute for semi-precious stones, not necessarily inferior to them but of a different and artificial material. All carried connotations of the heavens and were regarded as yet another representation of its heavenly blue brilliance. If you have enjoyed this video please hit the like button and, if you never want to miss an episode of the Numbers of Thoth, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. Until next time, thank you for listening.